Hello, good day. Does merger create value for shareholders? What type of firm and deal characteristic they may cause acquisitions to succeed or fail? If you're interested to know the answer to these questions, do stay tuned. At the end of this learning session, it is hoped that students will know how to assess mergers using event study methodology and draw conclusions from empirical studies relating to the success of merger. Let's learn together! The objective of this video is to analyze the impact of takeovers on shareholder wealth in both the short run and long run. Stay tuned! Having a view on the profitability of merger and acquisition is a foundation for effective practice. This view should shape one's expectations and approach. Researchers have generated a number of studies on the share price performance and profitability of merger and acquisition over the past 30 years. With each passing decade, more scientific evidence emerges permitting us to sharpen our conclusions. It is important to consider the latest findings along with earlier studies to synthesize some insights from the literature. Let's take a look at a few examples on merger announcements. According to the Wall Street Journal in 2015, when Shell agreed to buy BG at a 50% premium, Shell shares closed 5.3% lower, while BG stock ended 27% higher. When Japanese corporation SoftBank is buying UK-based chip maker ARM, SoftBank shares fell 11.3%, which is the biggest drop since October 2012. When Microsoft announced a deal to acquire professional social platform LinkedIn, shares of LinkedIn surged 47%, while Microsoft stock was down 3.2%. What do these news tell you? What happened to the acquiring firm share prices? What happened to the target firm share prices? Well, we shall explore further. The event study methodology was introduced by Pharma in 1969. It has become the standard method of measuring security price changes in response to an event or announcement. It is also a major research tool for examining market efficiency. Event study help address the following fundamental questions. How the flow of information to the market about an event affects stock returns? How corporate changes affect the value of the firms? What is an event window? The interval T0 to T1 is the estimation window. The data in the estimation window is used to estimate return model. The estimation window is used to determine the normal behavior of the stock market. The interval T1 to T2 is the event window. Time zero is the event date. In the case of merger, the announcement is made on time zero. The interval T2 to T3 is the post event window. Post event window is used to investigate longer-term company performance following the event. To perform event study, there are two important measurements. First, the abnormal return is the difference between the realized return and the expected return on a security. We can use stock market index return as proxy for expected return. Second, the cumulative abnormal return is the sum of daily abnormal returns 
over the horizon of the study. Let's look into a simple example. We shall learn how to calculate abnormal return and cumulative abnormal return. Day zero is the merger announcement day. The stock market index has increased over the time horizon from day negative one to day one. The acquiring company share price decreased on day zero. First, we calculate the daily return of the stock market index and the share. The abnormal return on day zero is negative 10% minus 0.56% and is equal to negative 10.56%. The abnormal return on day one is 2% minus 1.11% and is equal to 0.89%. The cumulative abnormal return is negative 10.56% plus 0.89% and is equal to negative 9.67%. The average abnormal return is the sum of negative 10.56% and 0.89% divided by two days. How can the performance of the acquirer be measured after the merger? There are two ways to measure. First, share price performance in short run and long run. Short run covers a period of up to three months after the bid, while long run extends to five years after the bid. Second, Accounting performance in short run and long run. We can use a minimum period of 12 months after the bid and track performance up to 7 years afterwards. Does M&A pay? Let's take a look at the survey by Brunner in 2001. This survey is based on 130 studies from 1971 to 2001. Read the slide. Who earns sizable positive market returns? The bidders or the target shareholders? How is the combined return? I'm sure you can derive the answer from the summary findings listed in this slide. This table shows the merger announcement period returns in a few selected research studies. The data are collected mostly in US and UK. The event windows surrounding the merger announcement range from three days to six weeks. Most of the research studies show that the target firms earn substantial positive abnormal return which range from 16% to 38%. On the other hand, the acquirer experienced negative abnormal return most of the time. In this table, the event windows are longer, which range from 24 to 16 months. The bidder's return are compared to a benchmark return. Did the bidder earn abnormal return? The answer is no. You can see from the last column of the table that the bidder abnormal returns are negative. How is the impact of acquisitions on firm performance? According to the journal article by Christine Tuck and Noel O'Sullivan in 2007, in the short run, acquisitions have an insignificant impact on shareholders' wealth. Worse still, long-run performance analysis reveals negative returns. If that is the case, under what scenario would acquisition generate better performance? The findings show that transactions that are paid for with cash and acquisitions of larger targets are associated with superior or at least less negative performance.
This table shows the post-merger operating performance in a few research studies. The performance measures commonly used include return on equity, return on assets, operating cash flow, and EBITDA. The findings show that in general, there is a significant underperformance post-merger. Finally, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you have benefited from the presentation and content in this video. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe or share. Thank you. See you and goodbye.